In these series of videos, I'm looking at the evidence that Dr. Blooming, a retired American oncologist, uses to show that HRT may be safe to take after breast cancer. He summarises the evidence in his book, Estrogen Matters, and in an article in the Cancer Journal in May 2022. And this is despite international guidelines that recommend that HRT is not routinely prescribed after breast cancer treatment. He believes it is safe for many women and he is a regular guest on menopause podcasts. I've had lots of messages from women who are concerned that they are being forced or pushed to take HRT in chat groups and they don't know what to do. So I took it upon myself to look into the evidence Dr. Blooming describes. This comes off the back of my article in the Mail on Sunday where I talked about how saying that we used to treat breast cancer with oestrogen is not the same as HRT is safe. And that's because oestrogen was used to treat women with metastatic breast cancer in the 1940s. And that's very different to giving women with early breast cancer today HRT. The paper I'm going to look at in this video was reported by Dr. Blooming to say that it showed no increase in breast cancer survivors after taking HRT, meaning it did not increase the recurrence, it did not increase mortality, it was safe. This was a study carried out at the Royal Marsden Hospital and St George's Hospital in London between 1994 and 1996. But it was not a trial to see whether HRT was safe after breast cancer treatment. It was a feasibility study to see if women treated with breast cancer in the past would accept being randomised to take HRT or not to help their menopausal symptoms. And that's important. This trial cannot prove whether HRT is safe because it was not designed to show that. They identified women from outpatient notes and 261 were eligible, but only 100 signed up to the trial. Two thirds refused entry, many fearing that HRT would increase the risk of recurrence or their family didn't want them to take the risk. Now, these women had either DCIS, stage one or stage two disease. And that's the extent of the information we know. We don't know how many had chemotherapy, whether they were ER positive or triple negative, that's it. And they were eligible irrespective of what treatment they had previously had. Now, why is that important? When it comes to recurrence and saying whether HRT is safe, you have to compare women with similar breast cancers. The outcome of someone with five millimetres of DCIS is very different to a woman with a stage two cancer, positive lymph nodes, who may have had chemotherapy. Another interesting fact is that the average time from diagnosis to entering the study was three years, but the range went up to 18 years. Now, why is that important? Well, we know breast cancer either comes back in the first couple of years or 10 to 20 years later. So by selecting a group of women who had already survived two to three years of follow-up, they were already going to have a very good prognosis. So the likelihood of recurrent disease was much smaller in this group. Of the 100 women who were randomised into the study, half were taking tamoxifen. We don't know if those that weren't was because they had ER negative tumours or they had finished taking tamoxifen several years ago. Half of the group were given HRT, half weren't. And the tamoxifen takers were split between two groups, but that is all we know about the breast cancers of those women. We cannot possibly compare outcomes of the two groups and give it any meaningful value. So this paper was designed to see whether HRT would help with the side effects of menopausal symptoms and whether women would be amenable to randomization towards HRT. It did show that the women who weren't given HRT did have a significant reduction in their hot flashes and night sweats after six months. And we know that for most women taking tamoxifen, symptoms do settle in time. Interestingly, it also mentioned a paper that said that the efficacy of HRT, how well it works, is actually worse when it's taken at the same time as tamoxifen. More on that later. But let's get back to Dr. Blooming's statement that this trial can be used to vouch for the safety of HRT after breast cancer because it showed no increase in breast cancer events. Interesting. Of the 100 women, three had a recurrence. Two of those were taking HRT. Of the two recurrences on HRT, 
One was given it three years after diagnosis and she had a recurrence at two years. Another was given HRT nine years after her diagnosis, but she had a recurrence six weeks later. The one recurrence without HRT happened after six months, but we don't know how long ago she was diagnosed. So if I'm going to be pedantic, two recurrences on HRT and one without means that HRT doubles the risk of recurrence, doesn't it? But I can't say that because these three women cannot be compared. We do not know their ER receptor status, whether they had DCIS, stage one or two disease, what treatment they had, how long, ago, how long ago they were diagnosed. It is impossible to draw any meaningful conclusion about the safety of HRT from these three patients. We just can't do it. So yet again, a key trial used by Dr. Blooming in his book to show that HRT does not increase recurrence after breast cancer does nothing of the sort.